Hi, I got another beer from my favorite new IPA brewer, maybe favorite new brewer in general, Foreign Objects. I just read a, an article about them in Food and Wine because there's very little explanation about what their deal is on their website and on the cans. So it says it's it's brewed and canned uh, by Foreign Objects in Clifton Park, New York. That's because they brew at the Schmaltz Brewing Company, which is related to the Hebrew Brewing Company, um, and they make a lot of silly beers. I haven't drank any Schmaltz or Hebrew beers in a really long time. Uh, but Foreign Objects makes very new, hip, New England-style hazy IPAs there. And it turns out that all people who, or not all people, but three of the guys who are running this company and brewing it, all their beers are from Urban Family, a Seattle brewery that kind of more focuses on Belgian style a little bit, sour beers, and their beers that we've gotten out here are all really good, but really, really expensive. Um, and Foreign Objects is, I guess, gonna, they're looking for their own brewery to build or, or buy or something, and so these cans are from April 4th. So that means it's, these are about three weeks old. A little under three weeks old. <clears throat> and this is called Wet Gravity. Other cans are these weird kind of modernist, uh, abstract, Edvard Munch <laughs> type things. I guess it's hand painted, these designs. And this one is just a regular IPA, 7%, it says it on there, and it says DDH is our normal. Um, and though there is a little bit of mystery about this brewery, they do always tell you the hot varieties and the alcohol content, and it always says DDH is our norm for all their IPAs. They do have one stout that I don't think has been really brewed more than once or something. So this one uses Citra and Asaka hops. And I'm just going to pour it now. I've not had this one. And of course this glass is not pristinely clean. Because I didn't wash it. <laughs> but it looks really good. I'm smelling delicious things already. Actually, I had a taste of this. There was like a almost empty can open at the store. I bought this and I was like, yep. Definitely want to get this. Had to hold back from getting a full four pack because I just, I still have some cans from when I went to Vermont a month ago and I just went to Treehouse, so I can't have too many, <laughs> too many IPAs in my fridge right now. But this looks super beautiful. Exactly what I was expecting from foreign objects. They just exploded onto the scene knowing exactly what they were doing and now I understand why. It's because it's all these urban family people who know what they're doing, including the head, former head brewer from Urban Family. And it's like super, super pale, but really, really, really hazy, but it's not murky gray or brown or any of that stuff. I haven't noticed any of that weird darkening from oxid oxidation in their beers, um, nor the weird flavors that come out of that, like apple cinnamon, or the, the tropical bright citrusy flavors go away. They just know what they're doing really well there. Oh boy, that smells very good. Yeah, and I just kind of got over a cold today, so maybe I'm enjoying this aroma even more because of that. But the citra is bursting out there. Really big. Mango, peach, creamsicle. The Azaka, I don't know, I was keeping it maybe it's a, a, a bit a bit greener, but I don't, I don't know if I'm getting quite green aromas or flavors, but it's preventing it from being just fruit soup citra, maybe. The citra is really strong. <sighs> yeah, it's really nice. Almost one note, but I'm really enjoying all of the all the smells I'm getting from it. Really tropical. <sighs> maybe papaya, guava. All that stuff and not much the citrus quality is definitely really creamsicle orange vanilla cotton candy but the thing about foreign objects is that even though they've got all this fruitiness they tend to be a little bit drier and cleaner and more bitter than a lot of the 
the beers that look like this that are coming out these days um, and have this insanely fruity aroma. Mm. Full, creamy, but kind of light. Pretty, pretty sweet. One of the sweeter ones I've had from them. Finishes with a nice, clean spiciness. And a, ooh, like a sweet cotton candy, almost bubble gum, almost banana. They probably have some, some interesting European fruity yeasts happening in this beer. A lot of these brewers have like these blends of American, British, and Belgian or even German Hefeweizen and sort of yeast strains in the, in their beers. And I think that's really affecting their their beers and bringing out these fruity aromas. But then they double dry hop it and definitely do some kettle hopping of it in a lot of their beers. It brings out some bitterness in the finish. Yeah, it finishes nice and clean. There aren't any weird plasticky things going on. Mm, love that mouthfeel. Mm, it dries out pretty nicely on, this, on the tongue the second time. Has a, a bitter bite. A very very light, savory spice happening. Now I'm noticing probably from the Izaka. Izaka is usually used in blends in these IPAs and it kind of adds a, a nice clean, non um, oniony or too grassy green bite to, to the beer. So I think it's supposedly one of these dwarf hop varieties. I don't remember exactly what makes dwarf pop, hops special, except that they're a little bit earthier and more rustic or something like that. Mm. Yeah, the, the body just kind of floats on your tongue. It's not overcarbonated. As you can see, the head died down. We still got some nice lacing. It's, it's not even really lacing, but it's just like a, a wall of foam on that side. It's a little weird. But yeah, it gets, at first, it's really fruity, really soft. And the aroma is still really fruity and, and sweet and candy-like, but now there's lots of earthy like deep black pepper clean woody resin not quite pine and not quite like muddled incense which i get in some some of these beers but really deep spicy um kind of herbal but not you know too green and grassy and i think that's probably what's coming with with the azaka and, and the flavor and and a bit more more kettle hopping. It's really, really different from Treehouse. That's what I've been drinking lately. And Treehouse is sweeter, really big on the fruity notes from the from the yeast strain and softer. And none of the beers are hardly bitter at all. Except for Curiosity 45, which is on tap, kind of an experimental one where they did really, really intense, thick hop saturation. That one was a little bit a little bit bitter, but kind of had some weird chemically um, floor cleaner things uh, from the yeast that my girlfriend noticed. This one, it just finishes so clean. There's just a, a little bit of a savory bite, but I think that's a part coming from the hops. Mm. The way it feels on my tongue is really nice. If it had a little bit more carbonation, it might feel a little bit fluffier, but it doesn't need that. The aroma is coming up pretty well, and all that carbonation just kind of makes you burp. And sometimes it it reduces the creaminess, and makes it seem fluffier than creamier. This this is nice and creamy. Yeah, I kind of regret not buying a four pack of this beer, but I have like two cases of IPAs right now in my house um, that I need to drink ASAP, or this more than two cases. I need to drink really quick. Uh, <laughs> so I held myself back and only got two cans of this, but I, I would recommend getting a full four pack of foreign objects. Uh, any foreign object you see anywhere, I would I would buy it. They're, yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable saying they're my favorite new brewery, even though they're only doing the New England style IPA, but there's so many breweries doing that, new breweries and old breweries that are jumping into the category, and they're just making the exact style that I want, because I realized that I love the soup, all the fruit up front, nice fruity aroma, um, fruity, juicy taste, soft feel, but then I don't want it to be, I still want a kind of a bitter, clean finish, and that's what they deliver at Foreign Objects. 
and give this one a four and a half plus. I was worried that this savory, spicy bitter bite would uh, get would overwhelm too much, but it's not. It's, it's really well balanced um, for my tastes. Uh, so I'd give this, yeah, four or five plus. Um, big fanboy of foreign objects. Hopefully they'll can their stouts and I can see if I like their stout style. Um, because a lot of the stouts that I like these days are these sweeter ones, but I don't drink them that much because they're a little too sweet to have more than a few sips. Maybe foreign objects knows how to do how to do the sweet pastry stout, but with a nice dry finish somehow. But yes, foreign objects I can't recommend them more highly. It seems like their ratings on Untap aren't nearly as high as it should be. Maybe the first batch, couple batches I didn't have weren't perfect, but they're getting damn near perfect. Goodbye.